In this recording text tutorial, I'm going to talk about automating the volume output of Logic Pro to get the best sounding mix. Here we have our orchestra concert from spring 2015. And I'm going to show you what we have to end up. I'm going to hit the A key. The A shortcut key will turn automation when you have logic selected, turn automation on and off. So there you see how it toggles. And you'll see, it looks like a few places where the volume was automated down. So what does that actually do? Well, it's pretty easy to see and hear. So let me show you here. I'm going to click back here at the timeline, the end of the first piece or first movement, whatever it is. And notice how the volume is actually pretty high here. He has it cranked up to six. Uh, let's, let's, see what it, let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> Watch the volume creator here. Watch this. Okay, so why do we do that? Well, I'm going to click this region here and move this up to the top and listen to that end again. Okay, the applause is, is louder, probably louder than it needs to be. Not necessarily so bad in this situation that it had to be automated. But let's go ahead and just talk about automation anyway, since it's a tutorial video. Um, where it is really helpful, in almost all cases, is uh, cleaning up this gunk right before a particular movement starts. Let's listen. Okay, pretty quiet movement. I can bring this down here. Again, it might not translate as well in uh, a YouTube video. Let's listen to that again. Okay, that has a nice clean start. We get rid of some of the air conditioning noise and people shuffling around in their seats. So that's why we do this. It's uh, not always necessary. Uh, but sometimes it's extremely necessary. Let's go ahead and look over here at this saxophone recital. Yeah, let's turn automation on. <coughs> hmm. Okay. Our automation view doesn't have anything. So we're going to start with a new file here. So we are going to go into, uh, <coughs> excuse me, write some automation. I'm going to turn this uh, on here. And we're going to hit the A key to see our volume. And notice how I also mentioned earlier that um, we have two tracks here. And now I'm going to want to automate the primary track here, the figure eight, which is what we decided we're going to use. Remember my mix here. And let me go ahead and explain something else here. This is a primary time. Like let's just say, unlike the concert hall, we have two different volumes here. We want the mix to stay like this. <coughs> a little bit of uh, Omni mic and much more of the figure eight. Well here, rather than automating both of these tracks and clicking all over the place, I'm going to leave my groups active and I'm going to turn on the volume. Now, I'm going to scroll in, find the end of the piece, zoom in vertically. Also a good time to get rid of my mixer. I don't want to see that. I don't need to see that. Scroll in here, and I'm going to click right there on that volume thing. Notice how it automatically wrote up above. Click again. Everything I do, I'm going to scroll out now. Everything I do is going to be mirrored on the second track as well. So let's move over here and listen. <coughs> let's find the beginning. Oh, somewhere. I can't really see the beginning there, so let's let's turn on this other button here and see if I can at least get some kind of an idea. I'm going to turn on this waveform zoom. 
I'm going to click and drag that waveform zoom and crank that way up. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. I, it's not as detailed, but I see something. <laughs> Still don't really see the piano, but I'm getting close. Let's find that piano right there. I'm going to put a dot right there, and I'm zooming in quite a ways horizontally. You notice that. I have not moved anything up and down yet. I'm going to click another thing right there. And now, I don't have to, but for illustration purposes, I'm going to zoom out, <coughs> drag this down. Notice how it goes down all over. I mean, it goes down equally. Notice how it goes down up above as well. Now I can check this entrance. I always recommend, I always do, set all four points. The low, the high, coming back in. The low, the high, going out. I always set all four of those before I drag it down. And you'll see why. It just makes it nice and easy. Now I can adjust where they're placed. <coughs> Not bad. Maybe I can move this over a little bit tighter. Okay. And now, I'm going to really exaggerate this and make sure I'm getting that piano note. I'm getting the piano note. That's good. What if I zoomed way in and I didn't get the piano note? What's that sound like? Okay, yeah, I don't want that. Command Z. Okay, we're good. Zoom back out. Let's come over here and get our the level and timing correct on the out. So there's the end of the music. I can turn this back off now. Turn the zoom back off. <coughs> okay, probably a little too quiet on the applause. But what happens if we have no volume attenuation on the applause. Let, how's that sound? Okay, that kind of sucks. So we're going to drop this down and try to try to make it sound reasonably in balance. can live with that. That sounds good. Okay, well I've done one. Now let's do another one. Yeah, this video might get a little long. Uh, you can easily see them in this particular recital. So let's just go ahead and do this at full speed. I'm going to put a marker there, a marker there. I'm going to zoom back out, find the beginning. Let's see what, oh, okay, kind of, kind of comes in soft. I'm going to give that a little more of a fade. Oh, right there I heard it. Let's move this back. Oh, he's still back here. I'm zoomed in pretty well, and I think I'm pretty much ready to drop my volume. Now, this is something you need to make sure you keep in mind. The volume, the recording level, was no different from this particular piece to this piece to this piece. This was all one recording volume. Therefore, I want to make sure my automation levels are also the same or really close. Notice how this one, I decided it should be at negative 5.8. Well, this one should also go down to negative 5.8. Look at the screen there. There's a window open up, negative 5.8, 5.6, or 5 point something is close enough. Because our audience hasn't changed size, so we don't want it to be loud in one place and not loud in the other. So let's listen to the audience applause in these two different sections. Notice how it sounds the same, and as it should. However, the last piece, uh, the last pieces on this concert were jazz. Jazz was a lot louder. Therefore, the recording level had been modified as it should be in this intermission when they were setting up, bringing out all the drums and things, so the, the, the volume was reduced. Let's see what the applause sounds like here. Solo. 
Okay, notice visually you can actually see that the applause is different between the end of the piece here and this section over here that we automated. So we have, unless you, I shouldn't say we have no, I was going to say we have no way of knowing what that difference is. If you're on your toes, which you need to be as a recording tech, you will, let's just say you recorded this at, with A on the millennia at, at 24 dB. Let's say you recorded this with A on the millennia at, at uh, 18 dB. That's about a 6 dB difference, correct? Okay, so this difference between the volume of the applause when the recording level was higher and the recording level was lower has a dB difference of 6. Therefore, you wouldn't need to change it. Uh, on the thus, you would just leave this alone. But let's use our ears. Let's just say we weren't on our toes and we forgot to write down that level. Let's just use our ears. Let's hear this applause. <laughs> then scroll over here and listen to this applause. <laughs> Seems a little quieter to me. So I think the recording level difference was a bit more than 6 dB. So I'm actually going to do the reverse here and bring that applause up a little bit. I can live with that. That sounds reasonable. Let's make sure that it's uh, the right time, compared uh, right timing for that increase. particularly care for that first really loud clap and that kind of faded so I'm going to move this over just a little bit <laughs> not that it changed it that much but I feel better um, so that is how you automate the volume in a relatively simple recital uh, let's see what we got here okay that was a very short piece even though the video is getting long, I'm going to go ahead and show you one more time how to do this. Put a couple of points there. Find the beginning of the next piece. Put a couple of points there. Bring your cursor over. Find the in. There it is right there. Drag this back. Drag that close. Remember, you're zoomed in. You've got to get used to zooming in and out. You're going to be doing it all the time. I think I can live with that. Let's come back here. Drop this down to negative 5 point, oh, I'm sorry, we're using this one down here. Negative 5.8 or so, or so is fine. Let's listen, scroll back in. You don't have to scroll in. When you get to know what you're doing, you can just do adjust this right there. I just wanted to make sure you saw how it was working. So uh, around 5.8. Come back here, let's get the out, fade out time proper. Okay, when you have an end of a piece like this, you might as well come back here and just fade it out smooth. <laughs> that, works, that works fine. Sometimes, I don't know if I can find a piece like this in, in this example, the applause <laughs> comes in really fast. <laughs> That's not one of those times. When that does happen, sometimes you have to be really cautious on where you put these two points and just where you begin that fade for the for the the volume to come in. Sometimes it almost has to cross fade and you, or you, you move it this way, you move it that way, and ultimately you use your ears to get your automation set properly so that when you play it back, it sounds natural. We're always going for something that's natural, which is kind of ironic because we're actually manipulating it so it's not natural, but we want it to sound pleasing. <laughs> I can live with that. Uh, we're now ready to bounce this file, which I'll cover in another video. Thanks for watching.